that music. He's not a bat, he's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bat Minutes! Hello, and welcome back to Bat Minutes Returns The podcast where we slide through the sewers and look at Tim Burton's 1992 sequel to Batman, called Batman Returns, one minute at a time. We have desperately got to work out a proper new intro because that was <laughs> insanely awkward. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> that was for a second I was even like, what movie is this? Oh, yeah, Batman. Uh, well, it's better course. than what I was going to say. I was just going to say that, you know, welcome to the show that's stuck around like a nasty floater. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> They should have said that for the next minute, though, because we're, <laughs> okay, we're in this for a while. But anyway, I'm uh, one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. I'm that other guy that you're used to hearing every now and then, John Parker. And we have the first guest of the season, all the way from the rough nut. Oh, not the, I was going to say the rough nut. <laughs> the rough neck. <laughs> oh, God, minutes. don't say that. <laughs> uh, Matthew Soto. Hey, guys, how you doing? Oh, how, how are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Yes, rough neck, rough nut. It's pretty much the same thing. No problem. It, it'll do. It'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have to, you know, just thank you for taking the bullet because you volunteered to do this minute, the the credits week, most notoriously the most arse pain inducing week for for us at least anyway on our show. So. Oh, well, it's a, it's just a bit like it's a nice little surprise because for uh, Starship there was no intro credits at all. It was mm. just Paul Verhoeven, uh, production company, and Starship Troopers, and then you're into the movie. Yeah. So we had to wait uh, 209 minutes just to get to our credits. <laughs> and the ironic thing is that you were on record as really loving credits. It was just like, why didn't you, I, I, does it, yeah. doesn't it force upon yourself it's like no? I thought I remember there been opening credits to Starship Troopers, and now I'm trapped doing this stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was all you wanted to do. That was why you were doing the podcast. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to go over the DP. I wanted to go over editing. I wanted to go over everything. <laughs> everything was like in the like 1940s and everything, where you got the all the credits out in the beginning. But no, it was just two things, and then we were in the movie. I was bored the whole entire oh, way through. You can blame George Lucas for that, so I understand. Uh, him and his damn rolling credits, <laughs> or his rolling scrollers, or whatever the hell they are. Yep. <laughs> Ruined movies for you forever. Ruined. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we do have a buttload of credits this week, so we might as well just we'll, we'll, we'll sink into this. Uh, so minute four of Batman Returns begins with the name Christopher Walken emblazoned upon the screen in oh. Times New Roman, and it ends <laughs> one minute later with more credits popping up on the screen as a, as a basket bobs into, uh, into another bit of water. It's a lot of the same stuff this week. Rollicking action is what's happening. Oh, the it's all minute. excitement from minute, well, second one to second, well, I'm not, I'm not doing the math. <laughs> I'm too tired. England is boiling when we're recording this. I, I am dying in this chair. Mm. But uh, but yeah, so uh, we, we did touch a little bit on Walken last minutes when he did a, a, a snifter of his name come up at the end. But now we get the full credit of, of uh, Chris Walken here. Uh, I'm assuming everybody knows who Chris Walken is because he's insanely oh, yeah. famous. I love him as well. One of my favorite favorite actors, I would say. Although one of my absolute favorite things he does is sort of technically not a role. It's um, a video online and he's on some chat show, I think. And he's reciting Lady Gaga lyrics in his voice. <laughs> and it's it's wonderful. I believe that's uh, he's on the Jonathan Ross show, actually. Oh, it? is it? Oh, everything's connected, Niall. Yeah, because we had the whole connection with Jonathan Ross in the last movie. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just got that. Because, you know, obviously we'll be going deep. We'll be doing a deep dive with Walken uh, throughout the movie because he's in quite a bit of it. Uh, uh, just one note I made, though, just to sort of keep us up to date as to where he was in his career at this point, was that uh, at this, in 1992, he was coming straight off the movie Mistress, oh. which I had never heard of. 
Uh, apparently, it's some movie. Uh, it has Robert De Niro in it. It's like early '90s Robert De Niro, so it must be bad if it's like <laughs> if it's like prime of his career. De Niro, and like I've never heard of this thing. Like I've heard of like We're No Angels, and that's awful. And that's got De Niro in it. But this thing is just like completely slipped under the radar. Yeah, so. I've not heard of it at all. It's most notable though because uh, co-starring in Mistress with Chris Walken was Martin Landau who would go on mm-hmm. in Tim Burton's next movie, Ed Wood, to win an Oscar for playing Bela Lugosi. Yes. And uh, the movie was uh, headed by one Robert Wool, who, uh, oof, oh. you ain't going to be seeing him no more. <laughs> that is a shame that he's not back in this movie. Spoiler alert, he's not back. I actually it- grew to love the character through last season. I don't, I don't, I don't know if he would have added much to the, the, the mix of... Uh, of Batman Returns. Yeah, but, there's a uh, lot going on already, I suppose. It, yeah. yeah. I do wonder, though, if there was any talk on set where, like, him and him and Walken were, like, you know, bumping into each other. And he's just like, oh, hey, uh, Chris, you know, what? Uh, so what do you got lined up after this? And like, oh, I'm doing uh, the sequel to that Batman movie. Uh, are you, are you going to be in that, Bob? <laughs> no, no. The, like, oh, no, 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 I'm expecting the, uh, the, the phone call any day now, you know. <laughs> Oh, the poor guy. He's probably sat by the Him and Billy D. Williams. <laughs> waiting for that phone call. Oh, that that still upsets me to this day that there's no more Billy D. Oh, it would have been great. Well, he got in the Lego Batman movie, so I mean he got at least that. Yeah, yeah. a bit of justice. I do like it would have been great though, pick like, Robert Wool and Billy D. Williams and like the guy who played Mayor Borg all like teamed up for like their own movie. <laughs> We're like, no, nah, the hell with these guys. It could be a spin off about about their characters. But th- yeah. there's no Batman in it or even mentioned in it. <laughs> it could be a CW uh, joint or something like that. Who knows? Oh, I want. I want this now. Yeah, let's make a whole show. Let's make a series. I. I, I a Batman show Gotham. without Batman. Yeah. Well, isn't that what they advertised Gotham as? And it's just pretty much. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's how you get the. That's how you get the punters in. It's like, well, if we took out the element that everyone likes, I made yeah. a show about everything else. But the, you say that. But as I've mentioned on the show, if it. If that's what it was, I would like it. If it was about like the gangs and stuff, and Gordon having to, you know, take him down, and you know he's struggling, that would be great. And the last shot of the last episode is like the emergence of Batman. That'd be amazing. I'd be like, oh my god! But no, it's kind of like half one thing, half another. Thing. I'm not going to go on this rant again. <laughs> I do was like, what, what would the show be about though? Like, because it actually could be a potentially like good, like a House of Cards esque. Like drama about like mm. the the post the, the you know the eighty nine movie like what have you had like Knox launches a full investigation into the mayor's office that could, they look into like why the hell weren't they doing a better job of dealing with this Joker stuff mm. and he finds out all the layers of corruption and whatnot and maybe like Harvey Dent's implicated in it or maybe Harvey Dent's like him and Knox team up and that's the kind of uh, mm. maybe then it leads to like you know although they deal with uh, like Maroni and stuff. Yeah. And then, like, w- within the show, the one thing you can do is Harvey Dent turning into Two-Face. And Batman's just never involved in that. But it's like, oh, Knox was, like, his best friend and stuff. And, like, maybe in the last season, like, Knox, has, like, he has to either gets killed or he has to, like, go off. And you know, I love it. Like, yeah. Like, oh, my God. I'm, I'm sold in the show that I didn't care about five <laughs> seconds ago. See, I would like... I'm calling Warner Brothers right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put us in touch with your contacts and... Uh... <laughs> And they're like, so you want to you want a show featuring the the character from that one movie that was so unpopular he didn't even appear in the comics or anything afterwards. <laughs> you want to make an entire TV show about him? Like, yes. yes, yes, of course. Greenlight it. It does sound a bit Phantom Menace, though. I'll be honest. Mm. With the you know the politics and things, people didn't like all the Senate meetings and things. Yeah, <laughs> was like, oh, the corruption at this level can only mean one thing: invasion. <laughs> <laughs> Criminal invasion. <sighs> can, can I ask a Christopher Walken question, <clears throat> which won't spoil anything for later in the film? I'll, I'll let it go. Yeah, that's, it's that's it's it. dark. Oh, oh! Like, I, 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 Should I, I, we at any point in this show discuss the Natalie Wood incident, or is that off limits? I think we're going to have to because I think like the, the the investigation is like on the is has been reopened, isn't it? So. Like I know for yeah. years. Like, are you aware of the situation, Matthew, with Chris Walken and Natalie Wood? And 
Uh, is it recent? Because I haven't. I'm unfortunately a little uh, dry on Christopher Walken. No, it's uh, it was back in the 1980s when the, well, Natalie Wood, Natalie Wood, you know, was uh, I think she was she married to Robert Wagner or like uh, was, yeah, I think they were married, weren't they? Yeah, but basically, yeah, they were. Uh, her, Robert Wagner, and Chris Walken went out on a boat, and uh, only two of them came back alive. And I'll let you guess which two it was. <laughs> And at the time, okay. it was sort of been like, oh, yeah, it was, a, it was an accident. She drowned. But now it's sort of like all these years later, there has been cause. I'm like, I don't think they investigated that well enough. So there could be within like the year or so we're recording this podcast. You never know. They could be like, oh, Chris Walken's been arrested for killing Natalie Wood. Oh, no. I don't think anyone, uh, any everyone I've um, read like testimonies from and stuff, like they're not implicating Christopher Walken. Let me just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much everybody seems to be saying it's something to do with uh, with the husband, or I think but it was yeah. the I think it was the um, the captain of the boat mm. sort of hinted it was him, maybe <laughs> possibly. Okay, like, let's make the captain of the boat sound really guilty now. I was, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, totally. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was that guy, yeah, the guy from Austin Powers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Oh God! Um, yeah, I didn't want I didn't want to get too dark on a, on a light uh, mm. <laughs> podcast, but you know it, it needed to at least be mentioned. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm sure it'll probably get brought up again throughout as well <laughs> as as the investigation into the case on goes. We'll, we will we'll keep p- you all abreast of the current news with the investigation. <laughs> It'd be great if it was like the like the OJ investigation. <laughs> like we were fully like the, this podcast just goes long because we're just every week we're having to do like court summaries and stuff. <laughs> we'll do a Patreon special <laughs> of court summaries. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, um, was the the next credit then? Oh, actually, no. The next credit is the. Uh, we actually then get the the title of the movie, Batman Returns, pops up, mm. and uh, then a swarm of bats appears from out of the out of the sewer. Uh, the, you know, uh, one thing I should say for that guy who criticized the Times New Roman font in the, the, the we talked about in the previous episode, uh, he must have been he was he not a little bit impressed though? They did the nice unfolding titles and then the swarm of bats. Mm. That's pretty cool. That's not that's not as basic as just having the Times New Roman. I'll tell you what, though, I actually, when I first saw that title, yeah, I, I thought the same, oh, it's kind of plain. But watching this minute like a thousand times, um, I've grown to appreciate how clean it is and basic and, and simple. Like, it's, mm. it does the job. It's quite impactful. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, you know, there's no, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, basically. What more do you want? Mm. Well, one thing, though, do you guys think that the bats are, are they legitimately... Within the scene, are they actually in the sewer, or you think this is just a a phantom of the credits that has appeared to make it look fancy? Oh, uh, um, I'm I'm fully on board with bats pretty much plaguing Gotham constantly since the 1960s. <laughs> I mean, there's worse things to be plagued by, I suppose. They they're not too harmful, are they? I don't know. <laughs> It depends. I mean, if you get like, you know, if you mess around with their uh, if their guano too much, you might get like a sick or something like that. But mm. other than that, mm. I don't think so. I mean, like uh, Cujo he gets bitten, gets bitten by bats, mm. gets rabies. Then you make an entire freaking horror novel and film about the crazy rabies dog. Like that's how dangerous bats can be. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> well, I mean, in the in the U.S., do you have this uh, law? Because I'm pretty sure in the U.K., if a bat moves into your house, shall we say, you're not allowed to move it. Huh. <laughs> if it decides no. it's going to live like in your, in your attic, you've got to just let it live there. You can't do anything. <laughs> no, we actually call the exterminator right away <laughs> and just be like, hey, can you get these, these you know, little bastards <laughs> out? Because we need to get them out. We're tired of them. Oh. <laughs> See, I mean, I, I get that. But yeah, I, um, I'm pretty confident we're not allowed to for some conservation reasons. So... Oh, it's okay. a bit, it's a bit of a pain because <laughs> they do. Yeah, they we do get them all from Mexico. Them. So ah, that, yeah, we get them all from Mexico. They come up, immigrate, and everything, and then they go back down. It's a whole entire thing. You know the administration that we're in right now. Uh, mm. Yes, yes. Uh, Im- <laughs> immigrant bats. Uh. <laughs> immigrant bats need a wall. <laughs> See, so what we have to do like build like an even like a wall in the sky or something, so they can't they can't fly over. Like what? what how, how, exactly. How do you prevent yeah, the immigrant? We just bats? need a bubble. <laughs> It could be the big, uh, the big wall from Game of Thrones. There we go. Yeah. Can't fly that high. Nah, surely not. Surely not. 
Oh. And it would, uh, you know, it would be an ice wall, and then you cross into Mexico. It's very hot. So there you go. <laughs> well, though, being so close to Mexico, though, would the wall itself not inherently melt from the heat? Or? No, because we're going to change the climate. Okay. <laughs> oh, that makes a world of sense, then. That's, that's perfectly fine. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, what are you suggesting? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, one thing I should uh, bring up, because I did, I believe I teased in that at the end of the last week. I was like, oh, there's something else about this one shot that it's like, oh, you know, that people linger and what that's going to be. Oh, I've been teased all all weekend now. Oh, I need <laughs> to know. Come on. Uh, it's more that the, this shot is basically a direct reference to The Third Man. The Cal Reed movie starring uh, Orson Welles. Of course, oh. there's a, you know, a lot of influence of Orson Welles over the first Batman movie. And there's been Orson Welles' influence over this movie already in the sort of Citizen Kane-esque establishing shot of uh, Cobblepot Manor. But uh, yeah, this is like, you can see it's already, he's, Welles is smeared all over, uh, all over this baby again already. Because the, the sewers do look virtually identical. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd have to say, though, cause I've always been sort of torn as whether you know the basket's very small but are is it me or are these sewers like huge because that seems like excessively massive for a sewer like this, it looks like a mm. giant cavern and i've never I, to be fair i've never been in a sewer but i go by the teenage mutant ninja turtles logic, <laughs> logic of like well, it's like little mm. kind of confined little streets underneath everything there's no giant gaping huge caves i don't know i mean i imagine there's a few that are, are big like the small ones, do they connect to a big one? Yeah, this is what we needed, like you know, Riley Bishop here for, because she was good with the sewer investigation last year. <laughs> so we should, oh, we should have had her on for these minutes. <laughs> this seems to me a little bit more like um, what is it, river runoff or like a um, drainage pipe kind of thing? Mm. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, oh, this these are the these are the pipes that you know keep the water from flooding Gotham itself, running to the ocean, what have you. Um, but I'm pretty sure there'd be like at least a few pieces of poop and a little pee in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it is a giant city. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a surprise, I guess. It's, not, it's you know actual physical water it's gliding through rather than just like sheer sludge. And then, but they're probably just like, nah, uh. no, let's not be that graphic. Just you know, maybe not straight away. Although we did also we did already have a baby kill a cat <laughs> in the first friggin' yeah. minute. So that could have been though like a great sort of symbol for what the Joker is... Uh, the Joker? Blizzy yeah, I'm stuck in the last movie. For what the Penguin is to become. Mm-hmm. Filth. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, then we get... Um, again, I complained last week about the the, the teasing, the, the blue balls of the score reaching <laughs> up into the sort of crescendo. And then we do get the, the final release of, you know, the Elfman theme when it kind of goes into the... And he throws in a nice gong there. And then, you know, we go into the dun 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 dun, dun, dun which is like, oh, here we go, it's Batman again. Uh, people who own the soundtrack of this movie will probably have noted, though, that the gong is not present on the soundtrack. That seems to be, it must have been like a later mix or something, because it does sound slightly differently mixed. Like, there's not as many mm. ahs and all, you know, throughout this this track in particular. So I don't know, maybe they fired that out early and... No, like, I tried to look into that actually, but I, from my brief investigation, I didn't really see much. Like Elfman didn't kind of you know go go into any detail about it, saying like, "Oh, I was unhappy with it," and at the last minute, I changed. It. He didn't say. It's like the day of the premiere. He's like, "It needs a gong, damn it, no!" <laughs> if we call all the friends. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then we do get into the the main body of the Batman march here, and then uh, we have some suitable high octane action while this really exciting theme music's playing of more shots of a, a basket floating down the sewer yeah uh, it's much like the last film where we we just stared at a spinning piece of stone for about three minutes yeah <laughs> but at least we know what this is least, the last one yeah was like, I, don't, I don't get what this thing is i don't even know what's going on <laughs> i mean you guys are stepping up from stone to a sewer this is great oh yeah we're what? in the big time now <laughs> what's gonna be next Flying CGI? Oh, my God. Whoa. Yeah. That probably is what is in the next film. I genuinely can't re- recall how the yeah. credits it, it is. <laughs> it is. But, um, although we do also have as well, I think, speaking of Batman credits, I think this one might be the only one to feature, you know, bats as a, you know, a, a actual swarm of bats up until... Batman Begins, which had like the like I think is the best of all the Batman openings of just like the the, the night sky with like the, the swarm of bats in front of it, and then you briefly mm-hmm. see the symbol, and then kind of goes into the movie. And uh, I don't think you think that would be a thing, to, a motif they bring up more often, but it's like no, yeah. this, this movie, that movie, and then 
after that, I don't think since like the, the, the other two Dark Knight movies def- mm. definitely didn't open that way. And then do you think it's just like cliche, and that's why they don't want to do it? It's like you, you get it. It's Batman. Yeah, I remember, of course, the the Dawn of Justice opening credits, where it's just like really low key, just like yeah, this stuff's happening, and it's like his parents <laughs> walking down an alleyway and stuff, and it's just like right at, at the side of the screen, it's just like. Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. <laughs> like, where's, where's the excitement? Come on, guys. I mean, this is just a, a basket floating through a sewer, but they're like, they're amping you up for it at least. Yep, they're doing the WWE thing. That you know, they're selling it to you, one hundred percent, and you're yeah, buying it. Hell yeah! You want to talk about wrestling? I'm the guy. Oh, thank God! Oh my God! I didn't realize. <laughs> yes, Nile, you can go. <laughs> unless it's macho man and then niles on board yeah. no 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 i'm actually a fan of um, a uk resident actually pete dunn if you know about oh him. yes i've seen pete dunn live yes. love him uh, i saw him before he was in uh wwe actually i saw him in um icw a scottish company uh they came here oh, okay. to liverpool and um and he was wrestling he was very good oh well it was a guy i was at one of those with you for your birthday you was he, you were you was were he that. was he at that one no, I think ah. it was the, the second one I went to. This is me desperately um, trying to nudge my way back into the conversation. It's like, oh, I, know, <laughs> I know that guy, right? Yeah, you'd know him if you saw him. He, he's pretty, he, he oozes machismo and also just charisma. It's great. <laughs> I, um, I know that this is very off topic. I don't care. Um, I, I actually pointed out to, to my partner, Lauren, that loads of women online seem to, well, and men, seem to think he's quite hot, right? <laughs> I get that too. Yeah. yeah, he is pretty attractive. He's not very conventional attractive, but he's that I don't know, like gruff. <laughs> That's attractive, it, I, think. I guess. Yeah. But <laughs> as soon as I said this to her, she was like, "What? Oh my god, no! He's disgusting. <laughs> get him away from me." So now every time he comes on the screen, I go, you know, I, I shout down for her to come and, <laughs> and watch. Is this you though trying to like establish a new like? Last season's is Jack Nicholson sexy. You're just <laughs> introducing some guy who's nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> like, is Pete Dunne sexy? Like, no, I mean, we it's ask- only because I'm here and because we're talking about wrestling. That's the only reason. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's John's it's formal be announcement at the end. He's like, I am so confident that the quality of this show that I can waste the listeners' times by rating the super hunks. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Also, Matthew, <laughs> you were just make the... super hunks cast. There you go, <laughs> Matthew. You weren't actually here for the the any of the Jack Nicholson talk last year. Do you think Jack Nicholson no, sexy or uh, he can be in certain lights mm. and uh, certain situations? I believe so. I'm a little bit attracted to uh, him uh, during uh, The Shining a little bit from time to time. Really? Oh. but that's about it. One threw over the cuckoo's nest is a little too much for me. Really? Oh, I would have gone the other way. Because I would have thought, like, oh, okay. cause the, the Shining has that business where, like, at the end, because he just looks full crazy, and the hair is all messed up, and you can see how badly, like, it looks like it's borderline like a monk's hairdo, where it's like, completely bald mm. on top, and then it's, like, all kind of long and, like, around the sides. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, that, that that's not a good look. But the, the Cuckoo's Nest look, I thought, would be, like, oh, this is peak sexy Nicholson here, but no. Uh, I, I, I got some unconventional likes on that one. And yeah, I do actually think Napier in uh, the first movie is a pretty good looking besides, you know, b- before he gets uh, into uh, Ace, or what is it? Uh, oh. uh, Ace Chemicals? Oh, a- Axis Chemicals, yeah. Ax- Axis Chemicals, that's what it yeah. was. Yeah, it's confusing that. We we were very confused. <laughs> <laughs> we had a whole thing. If people want to know our opinions on that. <laughs> We've got a whole bunch of episodes about it. <laughs> But uh, no talk about Pete Dunne in those ones, though. That I can, that I can recall, anyway. So. No, I'm gonna. Yeah, you guys can that. just talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put in George Lucas style uh, some extra bits uh, into those episodes now. I'm gonna insert lots of Pete Dunne chat. <laughs> the bruiser weight is coming to your podcast player. <laughs> Hell yes. Yeah. Anyway, so we have to press on with the credits week here. Uh, we do get. Uh, well, we had a little thing about like all based on characters from DC Comics. Yada yada yada. And then we got the uh, a first, um, well, not a first because Michael Keaton's a returning character, but the other mm. uh, first returning person from the previous movie, uh, Michael Go. So mm. it's, it's a beloved Alfred, uh, and then mm. followed uh, closely by Pat Hingle, yeah, Patty Patty Hing, back for another one. How he is so high in these credits <laughs> is beyond me because if you thought <laughs> he did nothing in the last movie. He he's barely a presence in this one. He's like, yeah, literally a blink and you'll miss it, Ken Gordon. Like, there's no point. Of, and then he must have had some kind of deal in his contract or something. It's like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll be in your movie, but you gotta put me at like 
sixth in the credits, even though <laughs> everyone after me in this opening credit sequence ha- has more to do in the film. Now, I have a question about um, about Commissioner Gordon and these two movies mm-hmm. as well, too, if you'll indulge me. Does he seem a lot more bumbling than any other media Batman at all? Like, 100%. Animated series. Yeah, this, I don't know why, but he is just so befuddled and, and just jumping around doing nothing like, oh no what can <laughs> yeah. we do say, he's like a buffoon isn't he like a comedy buffoon i'd say he really is and it kind of annoys me a little bit because i'm used to you know animated series commissioner gordon getting rough and tumble i'm used to you know other commissioner gordons you know getting into the action you know not mm. being as jokey as you know oh woe is me i'm an old man kind of thing mm. I th- yeah yeah i think it's really it's like from this one onwards i think because in the first one He's nothing really to do, but he is doing, like, storming into Axis Chemicals, and he is doing, like, oh, I'm in charge here, not Carl Grissom, and stuff like that. He has an aura Mm -hmm. of, like, this guy could be a police commissioner. But from this movie onwards, no. Like, this this one, there's literally a scene of him just chasing after Batman to thank him for saving the day. (laughs) And then Batman's just like, ugh. And just doesn't even give him (laughs) two two goddamn seconds of time. So, yeah, um, this, this movie through to the end of this particular iteration up until the Gary Oldman uh, era is the uh, is the, the, probably the nadir of Gordon as a character in media really at least in the well, movies but uh, of course uh, I think I put on the Listen Society too I rewatched Suspiria last night the Dario Argento classic horror movie mm, and was amazing. shocked mm. to discover that some uh, some random blonde woman in her 20s is playing Pat Hingle in it which is just the, <laughs> they call her Pat Hingle anyway. She's the one who gets her face pressed against the window, and then like the window shatters or something. <laughs> Pat but, Hingle. Yeah, but I have to say though, she's on screen for like five seconds, dies, still gets more to do than the actual Pat Hingle mm. in the, in this film. So, ugh, oh boy. But uh, I wonder That's if Gary so Oldman will uh, will play her in the upcoming remake. That'd be a nice little tie-in. <laughs> 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 Anywho. Uh, of course, and yeah, uh, I have to say though, between uh, Mickey G, Michael Go, and Pat Hingle, two guys who you know, don't get a lot to do in these movies, you know, Michael Go more so, they kept really busy in between the films. Because between them, uh, I believe Pat Hingle was in four films, Michael Go was in six. So Holy crap. It's all little bit parts. Well, I say films, it's TV as well, but like they were like, no, nope, keep, keep going, keep it coming. So like yeah, the, the I guess maybe you could argue Pat Hingles like maybe that's why he wasn't in this so much. It's like he was busy doing other things. Like, uh, of course, then we get uh, the next credit is Michael Murphy, Mike Murphy, not from RTE's winning streak. As many mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Irish listeners who are undoubtedly going, oh, the Mike Murphy won his streaks on. Who are listening? To I'll, this. I'll disappoint you though, Niall. We're not very big in Ireland. What? On the downloads. Oh my god! Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll edit that part out then, because clearly We're... no one's gonna care. <laughs> the, the the USA and the UK, the the two big markets. Uh, California specifically, but uh, not Ireland. No, we gotta. Funny, that's. Mm. Yeah. We gotta crack China. Mm. Come on, <laughs> we gotta. <laughs> <laughs> We've had about five downloads in China. <laughs> we should do like what Hollywood's doing in the minute, and just like have a random Chinese co-host come in, and just be like, "Here you go." <laughs> this is a, like a random Chinese celebrity is now on the show. <laughs> it's like, "Here you go." We've had two. We've had two people who live in Hong Kong. That's close enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. That's true. Yeah, but uh, I will say the film that Michael Murphy did previous to this. Uh, I was very happy to see because it's also, much like the guy who was the doctor last week, also a film with an exclamation mark in the title. Yes. And Michael Murphy was in Folks with the... <laughs> reads like the... I've never seen it, but it reads like it's um, like a weird reverse three men and a baby cash-in. Because it's like... Three t- babies and a man? No, it's, it's t- Tom <laughs> Selleck, sad mustache, I must add. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah! Oh, so wait, Sans mustache? What? Yeah, mother mustache is Selleck, so you've lost half the appeal right there. But I'm not interested anymore. No. Yeah, but not at apparently all. he takes in his uh, parents after their home is burnt down. So, and I imagine it looks yeah. like wackiness. And plus, it's got an exclamation park in the title. I'm assuming the folks is supposed to be kind of like a folks. You know, he's he's giving out about the concept of your parents been there, <laughs> like folks. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I, I didn't notice that when I looked him up. I, I did notice what is clearly Michael Murphy's most important works. Mm-hmm. They are his roles in both an Ewok adventure and Ewoks The Battle for Endor. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. He, 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 of course. Yeah, he was um, 
I have no idea who he was. <laughs> I have seen the Ewok movies, but I was a very small child at the time, so... And I wasn't going like, oh, Michael Murphy was great in this. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's been more than, I think, uh, 15, 20 years since I've seen those. Mm. I'll be... Oh, God, too. My enthusiasm for watching them is uh, is only beaten by my enthusiasm to watch folks now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'm like, I, I'm not going to watch it. and I don't plan on it, but if it's there, sure, yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm still... For five, five minutes. Like, we, we pitched it last week, and I'm almost seriously considering, like, when we're done with that minute. I think I might try to do a podcast review, reviewing films with exclamation points in the title. Like, that's 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 the thing. So you get to do, like, my favorite, McClintock, with John Wayne. <laughs> and then they'll just be like, I'll do a big special. We get, you know, you can come back for the folks episode of Matthew if you want. Sure. So coming in 2025, whenever I get around to it. That's if we make it that long. Yeah. I mean, this podcast is taking it out of me as I speak. Um, but my, Michael Murphy here, he in this movie, he's playing the new mayor of Gotham. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But is he into hot dogs? I mean, only time will tell, but I really want him to be as into hot dogs as the previous mayor. We're going to have to be carefully watching the film in intricate detail to spot if there's any hot dog references from uh, Michael Murphy's mayor, I think. Yeah, because, I mean, hot dogs became the food of Batman in 89. Mm. The food of the podcast. <laughs> so we need we need a food for this one. Yeah. Uh, raw fish. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Sushi. There you go, sushi. Oh, oh vichyssois. That's coming up. Well, uh... Uh, vichyssois. Oh, vichyssois. Yeah, so... That's be- that, That's more appropriate for me, mm. being a vegetarian, isn't it? Or have I got the recipe wrong in my head? No, it was chicken, chicken stock in there and stuff. Anyway. Oh, no, but you can make a veggie one, can't you? I'm sure I've seen a veggie one. Yeah, but, uh, maybe. maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but, uh, anywho, uh, we also get... We get like, I'm not, I have to say, I think pretty much everyone after Michael Go is kind of questionable. As, as their, their, their presence in the opening credits is a bit like... Mm. Are, they, are they really a big enough character to warrant their name in the opening credits? Because... You know, we got Vincent Chiavelli, who is the organ grinder, who's like the Penguin's kind of. I guess he's his right hand man, but then you don't even see him that much. So, but like, but Vincent Chiavelli is a recognizable face, so I guess that's why he's here. But yeah, you'll have seen him, listeners. If you don't know the name, you'll know the face. He's been in plenty of films mm. that you you would love, and he's a very memorable, insanely memorable face. So. I mean, I- I'll mention a couple, oh, yeah. but we'll obviously go into them when we see him. But I mean, he's in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Uh, oh, Bookaroo Banzai. Yeah, yeah. There's a podcast for that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, God. I could go on forever. Amadeus. He's in Ghost, even. Yeah. yeah. And Tomorrow Never Dies. <laughs> and, uh, Take your pick. Apparently, directly before this, he was in an episode of Harry and the Hendersons. So that's his. That's where oh. he's coming off. <laughs> and then we get... I'm going to know I'm going to butcher this guy's name. Uh, Andrew... I know who you're going to say, yeah. yeah. Andrew Briniarski? Briniarski, I think. Briniarski, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about it. He's uh, Chip, Chip Shrek. Uh, talk to him a lot more when we get to, when we get to him as well. And then uh, Christy Conway, who plays the Ice Princess, uh, who um, you know, just directly before this, uh, or not even directly before this, but one of her previous roles was in Doc Hollywood with the, the, mm. you know, the infamous uh, Michael J. Fox movie that Pixar ripped off to make Cars. And then, uh, which also co-stars Bridget Fonda, who's, of course, married to Danny Elfman. So, there you go. Everything's connected. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and that's the the actors for this minute. Uh, and for these credits, actually. And then uh, we could... Well, there was, one, there was one credit, though, at the end, the very last credit that I quite... Uh, I wanted to say something about casting by Marion Doherty. Mm-hmm. Now, I wouldn't normally care about who cast the movie, but... She she uh, did the casting for the last film as well. Yeah, uh, but she leaves after this one with Tim Burton. Mm. Like they, that's it. Then she's out if there's no Tim. And I think that probably says a lot about the direction <laughs> the franchise goes. <laughs> I think so as well. Yeah. yeah. Although she's another one though, keeping insanely busy between the two movies because she between Batman eighty nine and Batman Returns, Marion Doherty did the casting for Lethal Weapon two. Joe versus the Volcano, Gremlins 2, Nothing oh, But yes. Trouble, the terrible, terrible uh, Chevy Chase Dan Aykroyd <laughs> movie that I know Sean German loves. So come on, come at us, Sean. I know you're gonna you're gonna come at us, man. I no, I gotta say, Nothing But Trouble is an okay film. What? Oh, and that's you it. are besmirching its good name. 
It, it doesn't have a good name. <laughs> you, you are into, you are getting into nothing but trouble right here, oh. right? Uh, it's literally, though, oh. like, my main memory from it is the fact that Dan Aykroyd has a prosthetic nose and it's very blatantly a penis. Oh, it's that <laughs> one. Yeah, it's very, like, and there's no, like, that's not me going, like, oh, it looks a bit like, and they've clearly modeled it deliberately to be a penis. And it's every scene, it's just like, I'm looking at a dick on Dan Aykroyd's face. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Um, but also, Marin Doherty did uh, casting for Doc Hollywood, The Last Boy Scout, and Lethal Weapon 3. And that's all between the two movies. So she was busy. Man. Oh, The Last Boy Scout. What a classic. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm. I, I was more shocked, though, the fact that she did two two Lethal Weapon movies in the space between... Like, the, the, apparently, they are just firing out Lethal Weapon movies. It's like, oh, yeah. Well, thing. I mean, casting's tough, I'm sure. But, it, I mean, there's quite a finite sort of time span isn't there it doesn't take that long in the grand scheme of production i imagine yeah mm. ah, you can bang, bang in a casting uh brainstorm right here if you guys want to who, who okay in our cw uh in our cw uh casting thing who's gonna play gordon start it right now Boom. um Boom. I have to look. is this someone we genuinely want to play gordon or funny answer? Gonna, it just <laughs> it, it could be anyone I, I, let me say uh how about michael che Oh, oh yeah. okay. okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, we, so we got one. Now let's do uh, who's going to play um, uh, Knox. I see, because we, we also had a, a pitched Knox spinoff in the first movie oh, okay. as well. Yeah. I remember Miles Teller was the, the guy. We were like, oh, yeah, he should play Knox totally. So that's, that's, and that was in the – yeah. yeah. So that, that, I'm that the worst stuck, at I, these I, things. I stick by my Miles Teller. Like, oh, no, he could totally play Knox. But. I, and I'm see, like, that's that's in a space of a minute. We've already banged out two people in a minute. <laughs> that's how easy casting can do. I guess, though, you have to keep – you know, Donald Glover is going to have to play Harvey Dent, though, <laughs> just to keep the oh, kind of continuity. Yeah. If it's Donald Glover, Ooh, just to okay. get him to slowly start remaking all of Billy D. Williams' parts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I know that sounds crazy, and, and you're just joking, but I could see him playing that part. Oh, yeah. I could as well, yeah. <laughs> but all of a sudden, you just start seeing ads for Colt 45 and Donald Glover coming out. <laughs> and Billy D's is like phoning up his agent going like, what the hell is going on with this guy? Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still upset that we didn't get any... Although knowing it's meant to be disgusting... We didn't get a bottle of Colt 45 to celebrate finishing the last movie. <laughs> oh, okay. I completely forgot about it, actually. We it's can... not a thing in the UK, if you're a new listener, by the way. You, you can't really get it here. I don't think you can anywhere, can you? Here? No, no. I've, I've never... I remember briefly coming across, like, Milwaukee's Best. I think that was the only <laughs> like, thing close to it that I've ever come across. <laughs> but, the, yeah, Colt... Yeah, I'll the, I'm sure you can ship it in somewhere. Oh, you can, but it's it's apparently not worth it at all. It's... <laughs> it's <laughs> It's definitely not worth it, but I mean, just to say you've had it. Mm. That's my vibe. Like when I'm watching a movie or a show, I get a, a drink to match it. So I think I've said on the on this on this podcast before. Like when I was watching Deadwood, I I went and bought a, a fancy rye whiskey from America that you couldn't get here at the time, and now rye whiskey seems to be a big thing. Mm. But I had to buy it from a website that got it in for you. I was like, I want to drink what cowboy drinks. Mm. So you know, I need something for this film. But it can't be fish juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think you, you know, by adding in the fancy elements to the the Deadwood whiskey, it's like it should have been like dirt, horrible whiskey. <laughs> like Made it in my bathtub. Yeah, pretty much. Like that's that's what they're drinking. <laughs> they're like, no one's in the show going like, "Oh, this is a nice whiskey." They're just firing it back, going like, oh, "Yeah, there that's you true. Go. That's true." Uh, but yeah, so for this minute though, that is. Uh, do any you do you guys have any other notes for the, the the names listed here or? Um, I I just have that. Um, Andrew Bynaski. It seems like he is playing Trip uh, Chip Shrek, but he plays a great walk and sung. I think that's honestly what mm. he was cast to do: yeah. is play walk and sung. One hundred percent. It's it's great. <laughs> And normally a character like that would be kind of forgettable. Like he, he's not a main sort of villain, really. Mm. But the, the way I don't know, this movie does it perfectly. <laughs> I think he. Uh, I always remember Chip Shrek mostly because my favorite line of dialogue in this film is directed to him, where uh, the, the penguins trying to abduct him. And he's like, "Oh, I've come for your first son, Chip Shrek," and he was like, "You're coming with me, you great white dope." I was just like, oh, that's a, you know, I, I didn't even get it for years because I just like, oh, I just thought it was funny because he's calling him a great white dope, and then years later realizing, oh, it's a play on great white hope, 
I'm like, oh, that's to be even fair, better. To be fair, you, you first saw that scene when you were a child. You wouldn't have understood <laughs> that joke. Well, yeah, but at that point, I'd already watched the, the British... Uh, House of Cards, so like I was well up on uh, political terms. And Wait, you, you, know, <laughs> you are you being serious? No, Did you no see House I'm, of Cards before this. No, <laughs> but uh, I mean, maybe I did, John, but then I couldn't possibly comment. Oh, oh. That's, oh. A, that's a House of Cards joke. Oh, I like it. It's oh. very distinctly. It's the it's the British version of House of Cards <laughs> joke. You wouldn't you wouldn't get it if you've only seen the American. Well, one. you're not allowed to talk about the American one anymore. I think I think it can now because it's like no, it's Robin Wright now, so it's it's fine, it's fine, it's cool, <laughs> everything's fine as long as as long as Robin Wright doesn't Robin Wright doesn't do anything, as long as she stays in the right lane, then oh. uh, it's it's okay to talk about House of Cards again. <laughs> That's how you know it's the American one because it's the right lane. Yeah, <laughs> we we drive on the left. Ah, uh, there you go. That's tying us all in. But yes, let's wrap up there. We don't want to go too much into these uh, these figures because, as Nile said, we are going to see them later. So we do need to save some content. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to go a bit more into uh, Andrew Brynjarski later, I think, because he has an interesting um, little rivalry with someone. Mm. That's, uh, mm. He's one of the ones that I remember we... Um... Yeah, we made fun of uh, Robert Wool in the last movie because it was a bit of a guilty thing. It's like, oh, it's not Robert Wool's fault. The character is annoying. But uh, I'll say Andrew here, I think he is a bit of an asshole in real life. So, <laughs> <the kids. laughs> Yes, just a bit, just yeah. a bit. But before we go into the dark, dark night or float away <laughs> down the sewer, um, <laughs> Matthew, would you like to tell our good listeners where they can find you and your wonderful podcast? Oh, yeah, guys, you can find me and uh, my co-host, Johan, over at The Roughneck Minute. Um, we actually have finished, and uh, that movie is good and done. Uh, but you guys can find us at theroughneckminute.podbean.com for any past episodes, which are all going to be past now. <laughs> but, yeah, we go over we do the same thing that uh, you guys are doing, uh, but with uh, Starship Troopers. A great movie. Absolutely love it. Not so much the sequels. <laughs> uh, we're not doing the sequels <laughs> at all. Thank God. <laughs> you could maybe do a special bonus one where you just insult them. Mm. Yes, Especially, we are. we're doing that actually. Oh, oh, good, good. Especially the second one because that oh, that's even worse. The third one isn't good by any means, but that second one, jeez, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it's just a it's it was a cash in for money. Honestly, that's all it was. Yeah, and it's made by people who don't get the satire, and they're doing more like the book was. Yeah, so I mean, I can go into it a little bit if you guys really want. If you want to cut this out, but yeah, you could do a little, a little bit. We don't want to ruin your show for you if it's coming up. <laughs> that's, that's Let's do an entire special about this, the Starship, Starship Trooper sequel <laughs> right now. Well, I mean, so like the the whole entire of the rest of the second and third movie were directed and written by Eddie Newmeyer, who wrote the first one. So he kind of still had the idea, but he just didn't have Paul Verhoeven's, you know, charm ah. and, and you know, his his uh, directive style. So, I mean, the two just fell flat. Yes. Yeah. So. That's a shame. It needed Verhoeven, really. It really did. I mean, the third one kind of got to it a little bit, but it was still goofy, way too goofy enough, but still was somewhat okay, passable at least. Yeah, but I'd still just say don't bother. <laughs> to be honest, so just, just watch one. It's great. It's great. And listen to the podcast. There you go. That's the sequel. Thank you. <laughs> and join us again because we will be back on Wednesday. We will have another wonderful episode of Bat Minute Returns. And in the meantime, you can find us on Facebook at, uh, well, you just put in Bat Minute. We'll be everywhere. Uh, or you can join the Bat Minute Listeners Cave, our newly rebranded, not very imaginatively, listeners group. And send us a tweet at BatMinute on Twitter as well. We're all over the shop. Review us on iTunes. That would also be very nice. So see you again on Wednesday. Next time, the Elfman returns. But while the re-established Sonic Sorcerer's symphonic score provides the sounds for our sewer set tour, which Winsome Winston and Sar of Special Effects will stand up and be counted. Find out Wednesday. Same bat pod. Different bat minute.